Hi. Hey. We bought something. What well, we did buy something. Well, actually, we bought two things. Let's be clear. I bought something. Did you buy something? A little trailer. There it is. And then I bought something. What'd you buy? So it was January 1st, 2021. 1978 Trillium travel trailer. And it was adorable. It is adorable. It is adorable. It was really cute. But it, it needs work. Well, I thought it needed like a fresh coat of paint. It does need that. And new flooring. It needs that. And like a big fluffy comforter. Sure. But what else does it need? Well, right now I'm took the front window and the rock guard off and was fixing a structural crack in the fiberglass. And a leak. Well, that's how I, how it started. It was leaks. And all the windows leak. Perhaps the belly band on it leaks. I don't know that for a fact. I know the windows are leaking. So, the, I mean, that's not crazy for a 40, whatever it is, year old trailer. But when I took out the front first window, then there was uh, actual crack in the fiberglass so that became more of a thing and then you know I found more more stuff that needed to work with and it probably needs a new axle yeah what happened when you ordered an axle for it I couldn't get it, it well it, I wanted a, a, a specific axle um, that um, you can it's a torsion axle that you can is splined and I could set the, the ride height to different heights depending on what kind of train I was going to be on and I tried to get that but the uh, people I was trying to buy it from is one of the only dealers in the States. The vendor I think is out of Canada and they have been unable to provide the parts. So I waited for months on months. That was the first thing I was going to do. And so I waited. And evidently it was going to be very late so I started working on the shell. When I called to check up on it I finally talked to somebody who knew what was going on and he's like... On the axle? on the axle yeah. like yeah we don't know if we're ever getting those parts it's I've got a lot of other stuff going on in my life and working full-time on a travel trailer remodel wasn't exactly what I thought I would be doing I didn't think it was going to be that involved but it's become very involved. I mean I was okay with doing the work I just wasn't okay with being put on a timeline yeah and I wanted to go camping with a travel trailer. With a travel trailer, because it paid for a travel trailer. I wanted to go camping in a travel trailer. And how long did it look like it was going to be? I mean, you couldn't get the axle, period, but... Well, no, I mean, I could get another axle and, and all that, but with the amount of work that needs to be done to it and how I would want it to be finished, and the fact that I also want to go, you know, I'm retired, I'd like to go do things that I consider to be more fun than... Remodeling a travel trailer doesn't sound like fun to me. It'd be fun to use it. Yes, um, remodeling. And I, I don't mind doing some of you know the work, but I don't want to be, you know, a slave to it. Yeah, well, and we're not talking about you know buying a new trash can. We're talking about spending hours and hours and hours. No, and hours it, on. It, it needs to be remodeled. I mean, or restored. Yeah, it right. needs to be restored. All the windows got to come out, be resealed. I probably got to um, remove the belly band, grind the the plates out of the belly band, fill it refinish it with fiberglass I've got to paint it I've got to rewire everything everything needs to be rewired it needs to be painted inside they took out the furnace so there's a big gaping hole it has an ice box so I gotta put a fridge in I mean it needs a lot of work I mean it's I only found that one structural crack I'll fix that it'll be structurally sound could seal up the windows and take it camping but you don't have to fridge or just a glorified tent yeah it's a glorified tent yeah. hard shell tent yeah crunchy on the outside soft on the inside it's cute so that was a purchase back on january 1 we're getting into june mm -hmm. and i say to you this seems like it's going to be a lot of work and you said that i'm putting too much pressure on you to get it done because you want to go camping mm -hmm. and i asked if we could cut bait and by that i mean could we just sell it, get out from under it, and get something we could leave and go camping in? And I said, yeah, I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. And I said my only contingency was that I did not want multiple campers in my yard. So don't 
shop for a new camper. Let's just finish the window in this one, sell it, and then we'll go get a new camper. Yep. And I forbid him to shop for another camper. Did you? Did you look at campers? Well, I don't think so. Certainly, if I did, I was, you know, not to buy. I'm not going to buy anything. <laughs> yeah. That didn't work for me. I, of course, was looking at campers. I was a hypocrite, a horrible hypocrite. <laughs> and I started looking at campers because there were campers. And then I didn't see anything. And then I opened Facebook and it suggested the camper behind us. It's a Riverside Retro 155. 155. Whitewater. Whitewater. Right. I mean, it's got like it's got, that's an entire sentence. It's got all kinds of names. Yeah in silver and red on the exterior, earth tones on the inside. And I saw the ad and it had everything. It had a stove, it has water, it has windows. The other one has windows. You just had to take one out. <laughs> and we could leave in. It has a bathroom and a shower, which did come up that I really wanted the Trillium or Scamp with the bathroom shower and that one that we bought did not. It had a bench seat instead. Because some have the banquette and it didn't even have a banquette. And so it had like all the features because now we have a bed and a banquette separately, which I really wanted. And so it seemed like it had all the features and I came to Jerry and I was like, oh my gosh, I found a trailer. I was so embarrassed, but not embarrassed enough to not come down and show you the trailer. So uh, yeah. I was the hypocrite. I looked. And then it suggested. I didn't look at this one. It said, look at this one. It's for sale. And I was like, ooh, where's it at? And it said it was in Snohomish County. It was as far away in Snohomish County as you can get from where we live. Like 35, 40 minutes. I don't know if it's as far, but it was a ways out there. Yeah. It was, you know, it's crow flies. It wasn't bad, but it was in the middle of nowhere. I, there was a lot of joking that the guy was going to kill us out there. It looked like that was the direction to give somebody if you were going to murder them. But then the trailer was really there. It wasn't a scam. There was really a trailer. We looked at the trailer and looked at the trailer for about 45 minutes. Wow. Long enough that his wife was starting to wonder if we were really just looky loose. I heard him tell her, they're going to take it. She goes, what? <laughs> no, they're really, they're going to buy it. She was like, oh, she didn't think. I spent a lot of time. This is a serious decision. I did my best to inspect it, which was terrible. I did not do a good job inspecting. But I tried. I really tried. We bought it before I'd looked at any campers like it or trailers like it, which is not highly recommended. I've looked at thousands and thousands and thousands of trailers and hundreds of videos of trailers, but I had not seen this specific trailer. But the floor plan, I really like the floor plan. Hey Jerry, what did we just do? I didn't do it, you did it. Okay, what did I do? Talked me into buying the trailer. Talked you into? <laughs> talked you into? We bought a real trailer this time. Like a grown up trailer. Doesn't that look cute? Out. It looks really cute with your truck. It goes well with the little, little Ford Ranger. Yeah. And the Ford Ranger pulled it up the pass. Oh yeah, and this is our first camping trip, the first night of our first camping trip. Yep. We went up over the pass and brought it over. We're in Coyellum, Washington, which yep. is just across from Roslyn, where the show Northern Exposure was shot. All the exterior scenes on Northern Exposure were in Roslyn. And we're just right across the valley from Roslyn, if you're not unfamiliar with Washington State. So it's really adorable, and I already fell asleep and took a nap in it. And we already ate lunch inside. So we haven't quite figured, it doesn't have a ton of storage, so we haven't quite figured out where we're keeping things. It's real. Jerry spent two weeks working on it before we took it out. What work did you do on it before we took it? Um, I, I didn't film anything. Oh yeah, I sealed all, sealed everything on the exterior. Resealed it, recalked everything. Um, that took a while because of the caulk I was using. You have to be really careful because it, it's messy. Yeah. Super messy. So you got to tape everything off and clean it. And yeah, there was a ton of blue tape involved. ton of blue tape and alcohol and mineral spirits and... There are lots... Messes. And then I, I uh, 
sealed up the roof with the turnabond tape, which is really, really difficult to work with. Like that was, you know, that was a learning curve. Um, but that the entire roof is covered. We did fall, find a small leak. Yeah, there was, there was a there was a leak on the passenger side rear corner. You can see where it leaked. I had to wire up my truck. Oh yeah. So that was you know. <laughs> Second thing I think I did. Yeah, you weren't ready to. It didn't work when you plugged it in. Yeah. For your tail lights. So I sealed up everything on the exterior windows. Any, any penetration is resealed on the outside. So hopefully that you know gives us a while before we have to address any uh, problems. You know, my truck I bought used, and there was a there was a hitch on it already with a seven pin socket. But uh, when I tried to tow the Trillium, it didn't work. But I, I assumed the 40-year-old trailer was the problem. No, when we got to pull this one, the same thing. And so I knew my truck was the issue. But it was, I don't know who installed it, but they didn't have any idea what they were doing. So I ripped all of it out and ran all new wires and new jacks and circuit breakers and blah, blah, blah. It's all looks professionally done and the brakes and a brake controller right control the brakes electric brakes and we installed one of those so that's installed so yeah that took me that took me a lot longer than i would have expected just because of, i was mounting it mounting my jack in the bumper trying to get it up off of the from the bottom of the truck because it was mounted under the hitch and I did a little bit of light four wheeling on one of my camping trips and immediately ripped it off. <laughs> so it was not a good place for it, so I had to relocate it. She well, then we went through all the appliances, right? Oh, yeah, we had to go through every one of so the we appliances. Went through all the you appliances. did all this in two weeks. It, that's not impressive. It took, I was really slow. <laughs> <laughs> you, you did quite a bit. I was working really. hard, but uh, I work on airplanes, not trailers, so I was learning a lot as I went. and. Trying to not make a big mess out of the seal. So, so just, how were the appliances? Uh, stove works. The water system, the cold water system works. The water pump works. I made a gray water. We don't, this one does. This little trailer doesn't have its own gray water. It's not technically fully self-contained. So I had to make a gray water tank. And the water heater heated water. But then there was no water pressure. It would spurt high pressure for just a sec, and then it would die off and just dribble. So I started by pulling the anode out of the tank, and it, the anode was gone. So it, it's probably the original from 2014, and it was full of calcium deposits. So it, you know, I pulled it out. I knew it was under pressure. I knew it was going to kind of shoot out. And it did, and it was like a fountain of fountain of water and little white chunks, uh, a lot. Anyway, so I cleaned that out as well as I could with what I had, and then I put the old anode back in just to test the tank. And I still didn't have good water pressure. Didn't under I wasn't sure if it was the calcium buildup was so bad or what. And then I thought, well, it has to have a check valve somewhere. Right uh, for the incoming outgoing, and so I pulled the check valve, and the check valve it just it just was in pieces. Oh no! It wasn't broke. It had just come apart. It was plastic. Uh, it's plastic, but it become disassembled. Yeah. Um, so I took it apart, cleaned it, and put it back, snapped it back together, and then once I had high pressure, then I realized that the handheld wand for the shower is split the, the plastic seam where it was molded has split so when you hit the off button rather than it coming out of the shower head it shoots out the side off then. you're taking a shower with a very small holding tank for water yeah oh so yeah. you get wet you, get, you get turn it trough. off you lather up turn it on but it's still when it was off was spurting it was water. spurting out one side ah, and was, so that's why it. i ordered another one yeah anyway so i have a new anode and a new shower head Waiting was, when we get that home. That was delivered what? Because you know, Amazon Earth. didn't deliver it on time. Right. And refrigerator? Oh, and the fridge fridge worked, right? And the stove so, works? Yep. Fridge yeah. works, electric, gas. 
so really, I mean, it was it wasn't so much that anything was well. The the, the check valve was was technically broken, but that took about ten minutes to fix. So everything worked. Just the the hot water heater itself had not been properly maintained. Pretty, I think it's probably pretty common with with a lot of people just don't understand that service them every probably every year. Yeah. How often are you supposed to check the seals? What did the man? What was in the manufacturer? Ninety days. Every ninety, 90 days. days. Or something like that. Yeah. Every ninety. Well, checking days. the seals and actually having to redo the seals is different. This is a sure. twenty fourteen. And... It's a twenty fourteen. Time yeah. lapsed. Yeah. Things got crunchy. Well, I don't know how they got crunchy as much as they were uh, never sealed properly. Uh, they, at the RV factory. quality. Having worked in aerospace my entire adult life, That's and good. then working on really working on my first traditional RV, the fiberglass, 40 year old fiberglass, I didn't know what to expect. Um, it's fine. But these uh, aluminum sided RVs, I don't know, I think they're cranking them out as fast as they can. They are now. Minimum wage and <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't, not impressed. American quality control. Yeah, not impressed. I'm impressed with design. I'm not impressed with workmanship. Yeah. You know, probably not the best time to buy an RV. Oh, no. You should buy an RV at the peak of the market when there there are the least number of RVs out and people are paying the most. Yeah. Because that's when we've decided. Probably the peak. Yeah, we could have bought anyone in the last. We could have, well, our, our history with RVs is we owned a camper. Yeah, we used to be. Stealth campers. This is not stealth. We're not a stealth camper. <laughs> we were stealth campers. We were overlanders. Stealth overlanders. No. 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 Did we stealth camp? You're allowed to camp there. But did anyone know we were camping? I'm sure some people saw us climb in the back of the truck. Now, the the, the overland one, you too. The, I... I I think we went on one road, one trail that you might even call it a trail, and you freaked out when we were in Leavenworth, Icicle Creek. Oh no, I was thinking of that road up in Hurricane Ridge. Hurricane Ridge, that road. That's was, a dirt road. Wasn't that overlanding? No. And there's big rocks. And... It's about the same as driving my parents' driveway up here. <laughs> Longer, but the same risk. But you can't, you cannot stealth camp in a trailer that looks like this. This says travel trailer all over it. That's not, yeah, there's nothing stealthy. There's nothing stealthy about, about the it. Bright red and silver miniature travel trailer. Yeah, it's 1950 styling on the outside mm -hmm. and 2014 styling on the inside. I think they're still stuck in the 90s. Yeah, on the inside. On the inside. Stuck in the 90s. I know, we have to decide what to do. I, I can't decide if I want to make it just like current and modern or if I want to go and make it 1950s or not. So to see more of our adventures, check out the videos over here or check out this video down here that YouTube picked out just for you.